Um, yes, sir. But it turns out that under our assumption of I'm just going out for one thing and coming back, you would never use that, I mean, in theory land. All right, so let's talk a little bit about practice. This is one of the warehouses that has been implemented. Um, I'm going to show this graphic and then a second graphic. These are the two warehouses that have, have done it. This obviously doesn't look exactly like anything I just showed you, right? Um, this is the uh, um, warehouse I'm going to try not to name in the discussion. And then the second one I'll show you in just a moment. Then I'll flop to the uh, photographs and, and we'll look at those. So this is actually a um, floor storage warehouse. And so they're storing here. This is a, a lane of six here. So these are stored three deep back to back, of course, so that you're getting blocks of six pallets. They're stacked, I think, three high in the warehouse, a very heavy product. And this operation is interesting because they have a forward picking area and they wanted to pick out of an area here. This is pallet rack, as you'll see in the photographs. And so basically the flow is from the top. This is receiving and uh, containers are unloaded, the product is brought in, put away in all of the various locations, and then these are reserve locations here that replenish this forward picking area here. And so that's why these are only too deep. Um, these are for very fast moving products. In fact, they bring these in on doors right here, stack them here and then bang, they're out very quickly. So this is the very fast moving stuff they, they decided to keep in here. A lot of compromises from theory land or whatever, but I didn't really care about that. All I, my goal in this project, and I, I worked very closely with them in developing this, was just to do something different that might give them some operational benefit. And so we just took the inspiration of a fishbone design, hopefully you can see that here, and tried to accommodate the needs of their particular operation, which were much different, in fact, than, than what we uh, had assumed in the modeling. Now, one of the things that makes this work is all of the picks that come out of the picking area go to a stretch wrap machine. There's a small portion of conveyor that you'll see in a photograph. The picker comes out, puts down his load, it gets shot right through a stretch wrapper, boom, boom, off it goes. And then workers take it from here to the shipping doors that are all along the bottom. So this is sort of one way to think about the, the shipping and receiving question. One interesting thing that I had never noticed until we did this project was the workers here on receiving, well, they don't get any of the benefit of the fishbone, right? But in fact, they get just a little bit of benefit because sometimes if I unload here and I need to put something, let's say here, I might run down, get a little bit of advantage as I do a put away. But in almost every other case, I do no worse than traditional rectilinear travel. I just come down and over or I go over and down or whatever it might be. And so it turns out that the receiving operation is no worse, really, than it would have been in the traditional design. But on the picking side, we're getting some fairly significant advantage. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? And that's pallet in and pallet out, right? It is. Pallet in, out. Pallet in. Well, uh, no, not quite. It's pallet in. They do do a lot of pallet picking out here, but they are in here, they are order picking. Now, yeah, thank you for asking this question. Um, but it turns out that the orders that they're picking, they will often visit just one location in this area and often just two. And the sum of, or the fraction of all, uh, okay, let me be a little more specific here. When I pick an order in this operation, it is often many pallets. So I'll get a pick sheet and I'll go out, uh, all right, well, I'll go to a location, boom, full pallet. No, in this area, it is lesser. So I'll go out and very often for this particular skew, I'm just going to roll things off and that basically fills my pallet for reasons that I, I really can't discuss. <laughs> this is a little bit awkward, but anyway. Um, and so I go out to one location, I come back. Sometimes I'll visit two locations. Rarely I'll visit three or more. So it turns out that is, if, if they had, let's say in this area, were regularly having to pick eight, 10, 12 items, this would not be a good design. Absolutely not. But because they're often doing one, 
And the sum of one and two, I think, was in excess of 90% of the picks were just one or two locations. Then it made sense because the fishbone is very strong, extremely strong for one location, very strong for two locations. Three and beyond, not so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hopefully politely defer that question just that I'm not really an expert on this operation, first of all, and there are a whole bunch of detailed questions like that that would probably take me too long to explain the ones that I do know. <laughs> so uh, this is how they had run their previous operation, and so it's how they continued to run this one. Yeah. Other questions that I can defer? <laughs> all right. So this will be warehouse number uh, one, and you will see the photographs of this one first. This is the second warehouse. This is, uh, in fact, the Generac facility in uh, Whitewater, Wisconsin. Um, the manager there is happy to talk to people who are seriously considering, let me emphasize that, uh, if you're serious, he would be happy to talk to you about it. And he's given me permission to uh, make connections like that. So he was, in fact, the first implementer um, and did this without uh, even calling us which is incredible, uh, the level of courage there. Um, he saw one of the three-dimensional graphics that I showed earlier in a trade publication, and a couple months later, they were underway making it happen. So anyway, basically, they receive in this uh, set of doors, all of their items go to this area, and then a different type of truck picks up the item. So there's a double handle here. Uh, and I think they're counterbalanced in here, and then they're in stand-up trucks out here or something like that. And then these workers take product out, put it away, and that sort of thing. On the picking side, um, I actually I don't remember a lot about the picking operations. This is gravity flow rack for pallets. So they do a lot of pulling out of that area, but they're also doing, of course, just individual pallet picks. Again, these are generators, so one item is a pallet load of stuff. Let's see, and this is all rack. This is floor storage on both of the sort of lower wings, if you will. And then this red area in the middle is a tunnel, in fact, through the rack that they put in with the idea that we may want to do some task interleaving later or whatever. And so they just thought it was a good idea to, to push one of those through there, so they did it. Um, and it's a tunnel through the rack, so it's essentially a, um, uh, a cross aisle. It's a cross aisle, yeah. Yeah, exactly. By the way, um, numbering locations in this kind of warehouse is an interesting problem. Uh, it, you sort of have to think a little bit creatively there, and we worked with um, the first company quite a bit, helping them think about a numbering scheme that would make sense for workers. Um, but that's something you'd want to think about. Very kind of practical question. How do I tell someone where to go in here? <laughs> oh, wow. 250, maybe? I'm guessing. This is a small operation. Actually, both of these warehouses are pretty small. You know what's great about this uh, research? We have people um, email us designs. Hey, I was thinking about this, and they'll actually scribble it and, and, uh, and then send us these uh, um, drawings. It's been great fun to interact with industry like this. And there are a whole bunch of ideas. It would depend really on your input-output situation whether you want a different configuration, for example, if you have two stretch wrap machines that you need to focus on, for example, that might define something W looking or whatever. But I can't even tell you that that would be a good design. So the question you just asked, I almost certainly cannot answer with confidence. The only thing I can say confidently is sort of under the assumptions that we've defined early. I can give you my intuition about things. Yeah. Well, what I mean by that is actually, and if you're actually thinking about doing something like this, I have had um, people send us drawings before, and we've turned a couple of projects away. Not, not turned them away as in we're not working. We've said to them, you are making a mistake. Let me explain to you why. And once they see the flows and understand better how it works, oh, I see. It ought to be flipped the other way. Yeah, that's right, the other way. So make sure you do <laughs> And we're happy to help you think through these things if you're seriously considering any of this. 